you are listening to the Cup of Kudos Show, a podcast focused on sharing content filled with insight, motivation, inspiration, and sometimes a little spunk. My name is Elizabeth Morosco. I'm the publisher of Kudos Magazine. I'm also a philanthropist, a volunteer, a mother of two, an entrepreneur, a widow, and just an overall American kind of gal. Trying to make it in this world while being healthy and happy. We're going to be sitting down with business professionals and lifestyle coaches, medical professionals, and friends just to discuss topics that are focused on healthy, happy living and things that are simple to help you stay on track and find ways that you can even help others. Life is too short. Pursue your passion, make healthy choices, and remember it's about mind, body, and spirit. Hey everyone, it's Elizabeth Morosco. Today I'm with a special guest, Melissa Schumer, who's going to be sharing some insight from a journey that she's had with her family that we hope can help many of you. So Melissa, could you share some insight with our listeners for parents that are going through maybe a difficult time, including having a child that has long-term health illness that they're dealing with? Sure. Thank you for having me, first of all. Um, Sharing my story is emotional. We um, started our journey when our oldest daughter, McKenna, was nine. She was diagnosed with um, osteosarcoma, which is a very rare um, bone cancer. And she quickly... um, went into treatment right away. Um, One of the things that we found that was helpful for us to get through it as a family, um, as well as McKenna, um, was to be there for her. Um, We were surrounded, um, not just Kenna, but our entire family. We got immediately surrounded by our friends, our family, And um, we named that immediately um, McKenna Squad, and um, that has stuck with us ever since. So day one, that that came, and uh, McKenna loved it, Um, and uh, and our McKenna Squad has grown. It has gotten deeper, and. It has uh, taught us how to be there for others. Um, They were there for us. And how were they there for us? They were um, there in all the times, the good times, the bad times, um, the days that we needed to cry, the days that we celebrated. And that's something that kept us going as well, is actually celebrating the smallest positive thing that you could um, that you could have, um, and just getting through one day at a time, um, being patient with each other, um, showing so much love and support. Um, I can't describe that, that feeling of all of the love and support, but it was immediate, um, that we were not going to go through this alone. Um, and McKenna felt it immediately. She didn't seem to bat an eye when she was diagnosed. Um, I'm surprised we didn't get kicked out of the hospital. We have some funny stories. We have some funny um, videos of 20 of us in her room and playing games and cracking up, and she's leading the pack. Um, yep, she had to start all of her chemo. Um, and that, yes, brought her down as in physically, but it didn't seem to bring her down mentally, um, especially at first. Um, once her chemo, um, issues dissipated, she was running around and I couldn't keep up with her. So I would say just depending on, you know, your situation, um, watching McKenna go through this gave me the strength um, that I needed to be there for her 
but people would say Kenna watched me and my strength and that's where she was getting it from. And so I don't know, we were just feeding off of each other or whatever. But um, her and I were able to spend a lot of, we spent all of our time together. Um, when we had um, family over, um, we made sure to made sure to, to, to just all be there for each other and do what families do together. And our family was always big on playing games. And so, um, I don't know, that's, that's what we, that's what we did together. We just came together and we didn't lose a beat in regards to family. And, um, I think that that brought her as well as my other daughter, Hannah, um, who needed support as well. Um, and my husband and I, and, um, we didn't have time to really sit and think about, um, the situation. If we were in the hospital, there were always somebody there. Um, we enjoyed bringing, um, Hannah to the hospital and just let her see what was happening with her sister and talking to her. Um, she was very young at that time. Um, just turning eight years old and worried about how her sister was doing, but she got to see um, how it was like, how her life was like in the hospital. And then she got to see how her life was at home. And then she said, okay, so she's going to be okay after a few days. We'd say, yup. And so she understood after a few days that um, that sister was going to be back to playing and doing her thing. So I feel like that communication that we always talked about what was going to be happening, um, how was McKenna going to look um, when she lost her hair, when she lost her eyebrows, when she lost her lashes. Um, McKenna, you probably wouldn't be able to tell if you looked at a picture of her that she had a wig on and that she did her own makeup. Um, and she got to spend that time with her sister um, talking about different things that you don't talk to you know your sister about as in wigs and makeup at eight and ten now um and so they bonded in a, a different way there um I just feel like um knowing that not only we had support here but I know that we grew in our um and our spiritual growth as well. Um, we had no other choice. Um, not that, I mean, we went to church with our children. We had that feeling. We had that knowledge. But now it was brought on in a different sense. Um, now we were in a real fight. And we were in this huge storm of ourselves. And we had to get through this. And how we got through it was... Um, a lot of praying, um, a lot of crying, um, but at the same time, we felt that love, and I wrote in my journal quite a bit about the feeling that we had um, with everybody surrounding us. You can have strength, especially when you have people surrounding you to help uh, encourage those steps through those very difficult days. And uh, one of the beautiful things I, I really loved hearing you say were how your two daughters were connecting and it wasn't about being sick. It was about being girls, even if it was about yes. eyebrows and wigs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think it's one of the beautiful things about being able to get in and help other people where they're going through um, trauma or difficult time is helping them still connect to some of the basic things in life that bring joy. And Correct. that it's one of the things that you've done um, by continuing uh, this beauty squad. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about what's this beauty squad all about? So I was saying earlier that McKenna, during this time that she went through so much, you know, you would say so much darkness, um, she brought so much light and um, she shared it with everybody and how she shared it was that's how she started connecting with people um, in a different way and it 
healed us, I felt, as well, to watch her be such a light. It was amazing um, watching this. But anyways, her passion she found during this time was her love of makeup. And the girls got to go to um, Alta one day as a early Christmas present. And I let them both get makeovers done. And I asked the girl, go through, you know, McKenna's um, bag now and tell me what's good and tell me what I need to get rid of because she's going through something now that she needs to have a better quality than your normal um, quality, I felt. And I wanted to make sure um, it was good for her skin as well. So <laughs> she had details to, better. <laughs> yes. Let's keep you healthy and exactly. healthy. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, of course, sister is joining this. We're not leaving her out whatsoever. So they both got their um, makeup done. And then I asked her, the girl that did both of their, her makeovers, I said, could you take them around the store now and just kind of give them a little tour and um, put some things in their basket that would be essentials that they would both need and things that you used on them today that they both enjoyed. So she did that. <laughs> So I, I think one of the things is, is no matter what, girls will be girls. Yes. And speaking of which, Hannah's walking into the room right now, and she still has, like, the girly eyelashes going. Always. <laughs> yeah. Hannah loves her eyelashes. And she's literally spinning in the foyer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty little thing. McKenna loved her eyelashes, too. So McKenna taught Hannah. I don't know how they did it. She taught me, too. I didn't grasp any of the concepts. Of what? Eyebrows what? and eyelashes? Eyebrows, eyelashes. Oh um, anyways, um, so we did this, um, we ended up going on a little shopping spree at Alta and, um, it's like every girl's dream. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so we came home with some high quality stuff for both of them. Right. And I will have to say to me, I thought that's kind of where we would be done. Right. Um, I was completely wrong in that aspect. Um, McKenna wanted to go back every single day after that, whether it was to Alta or Sephora or any other place that sold an obscene amount of makeup. So she watched all of her YouTube videos, and she was exceptional in a way that I have never seen an adult actually do before, except maybe on a wedding day right, or something. Right. But to see a 10-year-old, 11-year-old little girl do what she did with her makeup um, kind of blew us all away. So that started the whole ball rolling of makeup and more makeup and then more makeup. So people started purchasing um, gift cards and she took those gift cards um, to the nth degree and she spent every single one of them. Um, she had them spent before she even got them. Of the meaning, gift cards. Yes. <laughs> meaning next time I get a gift card, I know what I want next. Because she would watch her YouTubers and she would be like, oh, I want to try this and this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then she did her own YouTube podcast one time. Mm -hmm. And um, it was adorable. Um, I could sit and watch her all day kind of talking about her makeup and, and showing what she did and things like that. So you saw her joy. Um, you saw her um, find an avenue to help herself through this horrific Right, um, right. Disease that she was fighting. And um, she shared her light with everybody around us. So again, it was me and it was her sister, Hannah. And then it trickled down to her friends. I'm going to tell you, her friends know great quality products now. <laughs> and they all ask for them. And we always say, thanks, Kenna. Right. Um, whenever us moms go to Ulta and we try to do something and we're like, you know, what do we buy? I don't know. I wish Kenna was here because she would know. Right. Um, but she just had a look. I um, mean, it was a different look every time she did her makeup. Mm -hmm. She wanted it to be different. And she explored all these different, you know, avenues and looks and different ways of doing it. And I was just like, 
I have. I had no idea Makes how you she realize did it. you don't know how many Correct. different ways you I, are, could exactly. do it. Exactly. Yeah. So you get yes. this mindset. So young too. Yes, I'm used yeah, to a palette of talent. four colors, <laughs> and she has a palette of thirty. Right. I didn't even use the word palette until I met McKenna, or until McKenna started doing this. That's I'm hysterical. like, yes. And so she taught us so much, mm. and um, that, like I said, was her avenue to her strength and her courage um, to get through a hard time. So. I and am. It sounds like it was something passionate. Oh you know? yes. So I'm in awe that she found her own way, mm-hmm. and we all followed right behind her. Mm-hmm. And so in my world, I followed her, but again, everybody says, "Melissa, she followed you." Mm-hmm. But she said, "You know, you have passions, and you're always doing things." And she just found her own, and and she had this love that she wanted to share it with everybody. Right. Right. So that was, that was something that was, um, at the beginning. And so she took it from there and, um, cause she ultimately did get to share it with many, many more people besides yes. just her sister Correct. and her close friends. Yes, she did. Yeah. So tell us about that because recently you just did a launch with Hurley Foundation and Correct. was it Landel Packaging? Landel has, and then yes. your foundation. And what's the name of your foundation? It's McKenna Squad Beauty Bar. I love that. Yes. <laughs> um, so the three of you collaborated together to actually bring this to kids in the hospital. Correct. So we, Tell me about that. That's the McKenna's, um, we call those the McKenna's Beauty Bar boxes. Right. So we have actually two different entities right now. Okay. We have the boxes, and the boxes came second. Okay. So the initial came um, when we were in Detroit, where she received all of her treatment for um, for her cancer. Um, and it was at that time that she's um, somebody came to her and said, um, "There has been a donation made in your um, in your honor to the hospital. We want to know what you'd like to do with this money." And um, she was kind of like. Well, hello, I would like to, and this is what she came up with. I want to bring makeup to the kids here in the hospital. How can I do that? And so that's the initial piece of it. Um, Then it came into works that, well, you can do makeup, meaning you can donate makeup, and then we'll do like um, the nurses and child life can take our makeup from our closet and hand it out to kids that would be interested in it. And she was like, okay. Well, then a few weeks later, kind of the next entity came into play as in, hey, guess what? We got a room. And I think that this room is going to be a room that you can turn into what you would like. And so from there, McKenna was like, oh, that sounds really exciting. An actual room where kids can come down and get their makeup done. They can take their makeup. They can use the makeup. They can play with the makeup. Um, perfect. I actually, I really love this idea for anybody that's really spent significant amount of time in the hospital when you're dealing with a loved one that has long-term illness that they're fighting and battling. Yes. Um, after a while, those walls and the basic things that are there can become very redundant. Yes. Um, especially after you get through to the phase of where there's like a, a steady calm. Yes. And then it becomes worse than cabin fever. Mm-hmm. Yes, so it I does. imagine um, for the kids that were in the hospital, again, she became this ray of light, like shining just something that was happy. Mm-hmm. And to those, what are they? Standard beige walls. Yes. <laughs> and so. Well, not at all the children's hospitals, but yeah. still. But yeah. she knew firsthand that feeling of yeah. being in there. And wanting something to do to make this time um, go faster because it does. It takes a long time to to get treatments done or to um, recover from a surgery. This time is a long time that kids are, you know, sometimes in these children's hospitals. And so taking it from a firsthand person, again, a kid, 10, 11 years old, knew that it, the, the hospital needs something. It needs something to nurture kids. Right. It needs right. a place for them to heal. Sure. It needs a place for them to go to make themselves feel a little bit better and forget about doctors for for a while. 
Exactly. And this is what she... Just be a kid. Yes, just to be a kid. Just to live. Yes. And be a kid. Yeah. So she came up with her um, her name one day, and she said, I got it, McKenna Squad Beauty Bar. Mm -hmm. I love that Kenna didn't use just her name, McKenna's Beauty Bar. Yeah. um, Because she knew that she was encompassed by her squad. And her squad is what made her and us feel so much better. And so she knew that it was probably going to take the squad, the entire squad that keeps growing, to keep this going. So she had the mindset of a leader. She sure Even did. at a young age, she got that picture that it was more than her. Correct. For it to help people. Correct. And more than her for it to be able to help people. And she knew she so wanted young. to. Yes. And young she and knew, wise. Yes, she was. She was. Um, she should have been an entrepreneur. <laughs> well, I feel like she is. She kind of was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. this is nothing that has stopped. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. So anyways, um, she designed this room. She knew she wanted these beautiful um, colors. So she went to the designer. We had a designer that um, was given to us. And she was going to kind of tell us what we could use in the hospital and what we could not use. Right. Because there are some restrictions. Big time. That, There's um, a lot of restrictions. People know on yes. things that you can and yes. can't have in the hospital because of allergies or mm-hmm. reactions right you know even things like latex yes very um, much so so yeah that was great though mm-hmm. that they did that but anyway so yeah tell us a little bit about that designer she met with so the designer um was a, a person that worked in the hospital that had to you know go and consult with all the different floors and say okay can the um can the oncology kids go and have this in that room can right. whatever other sorry i don't know the other you know ailments now but um every floor had to have um a consult as in what could happen in this room and what could not. So that person was very helpful. She says, I want a chandelier. And they said, it's a beautiful idea, Kenna, but sorry, I can't have it. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you your chandelier, but in a different way. So her big wall, when you walk into the Beru Bar, is this gorgeous chandelier wall. So we couldn't have the chandelier hanging but it's a huge statement in the in the beauty bar itself. So, is it like so what is it like a print? It piece? is a print piece that takes okay. up the entire wall. Love it. Gorgeous. Love it. Yeah. She said, "I want sparkle paint on the wall." Kenna, great idea, but I can't do it. But I'm going to tell you what I can do for your sparkle. I can get a sparkle floor for you. She said, "Great." Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This lady's right. amazing. Was it a lady? It was a lady. It was, a, la- it like was a lady. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it took a lot of consulting and a lot of research to say, yeah. "This is what I can and can't do." Um, she wanted to have two stations. She said, "Perfect," but one of them needs to be handicap accessible because we have wheelchairs. Oh, that's mm-hmm. genius! Yeah, that was. And good And we have, you know, all your IV poles. We need to make sure there's enough room in there. Okay, done. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I want those mirrors with the lights that go around it. Okay, I can't have the lights coming out of it, but I have lights behind it. (laughs) She says, okay. She Uh, never said no. She never said no. I love people like that. Yes, I do too. Yeah, wow. So she took all of her ideas. She took her logo that McKenna designed. Oh, McKenna designed that? She sure did, and she knew exactly what she wanted. (gasps) She wanted the close-up of her eyelashes, and she wanted that look because she always thought that her eyelashes were on fleek is what she would say. Um, So the designer, (laughs) they created her logo. or No, she created her logo, Uh and she wanted the picture of her logo to be another um, huge point in the beauty bar as well. beautiful. Yeah, and I'm looking at a picture of her and her sister right now, and you can see her smile right through her eyes. Yeah. Always. Yeah. They both have that beautiful smile. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. It takes strength even during that difficult time to maintain that. Yeah. So you could tell there's a lot of love being poured into that. Those are the things you kind of got to look back on, too. Yeah. Those loving things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But an amazing young mind. To be that young, to be able to think, no, 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 I know exactly what I want. Right. So, so that's our first place. Would you say that she got that from you or your husband? Like that uh, focus, determination. 
I would say <laughs> once I have something in my mind, yeah. I know what I want it to be. I know what I want it to look like. I can't design it. I can't do it. Right. But I sure know when you show it to me, yes, that's what the look I'm going yeah. for. Right. And right. so that's what she felt when she saw, I want the blush pink. I want the little touch of gray. So again, she was able to design her room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when she passed away in March, she didn't get to see the room. That was very hard for me. Um, so you're coming up on the one-year anniversary next month. Correct, of her passing. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard. It's that very first hard. year is really... Yes, it's been a lot of... <sighs> that's, everything is a first year without her. And yeah. Not a fan. No. No. Not at all. Not at all. Because I remember last year what everything was. Right. Every detail. Like Valentine's Day has been hard. I remember what I bought her for Valentine's Day and waiting for her to come home yeah. from the hospital. And we never got to do that. And it's hard She's for me. at the hospital. Right. Yeah. Right. It's hard. It's hard. And then getting through that first year mm-hmm. with the willingness to create new memories so are you finding that through uh, this beauty bar, is it creating a uh, source of strength for you to keep pushing through this really hard time? I, uh, I would say there's no doubt in my mind that that's exactly what has helped us um, because I'm not just grieving for her. Mm-hmm. I'm grieving for her and I love to get to talk about her. Right. And right. so I get to share her story and her passion Mm-hmm. And that helps me immensely. Um, it's been ther- very therapeutic for me and mm-hmm. and my husband and Hannah to, um, like, watching Hannah cut the ribbon um, when we opened up the beauty bar. And she's like, welcome to McKenna Squad's beauty bar. And so to what have... a beautiful tribute. Her right. little sister yes. got to do that. Yes. So how old was Hannah when she cut the, the ribbon? Um, that was um, just past year. So 2018... Hannah just turned 10. Wow. Okay. Okay. And so that's what she wanted to do. She says, I want to cut the coat, you know, cut the ribbon. I go, you betcha. Right. Um, And so we had a day that all of our family and friends got to come down, Mm -hmm. um, which you don't get to do. Um, People can't just walk down to the hospital and go into the beauty bar. Right. Um, It's a privacy thing. Um, These kids are in a hospital healing and, um, we got to be there the very first day and see a couple kids come in and experience the beauty bar. Right. Um, right. There was, and what is that like too? Because with some of these kids like with cancer Mm -hmm. and you mentioned briefly, you know, we're familiar with losing hair on the top of our head, but uh, one of those things that people don't necessarily get, but it might look different is when we lose our eyebrows and our eyelashes Mm -hmm. and especially for a child, so um, when this opened up, were you finding the children having positive self-images by having access to do this? Yeah, the kids would walk in and, again, be in there that day. And every day that we've been able to be there, yeah, um, we've got to experience this. Um, families, moms, dads, the children, siblings walk into this beauty bar, and they are in awe. Um, that just sends you know, heartstrings through me completely, um, just to see that look. Um, and then to say, well, guess what? You get to do something in this room and you start opening up all the drawers and they're like, they have to ask, um, me, can I use that? I'm like, that's what this is here for. Yes, it's for you. And they're in kind of a shock mode. I get to use this. Yes. And keep it. Mm Mm-hmm. It's for you to keep. I want you to play with it. I want you to take it with you back to your room, take it home with you, and just know that this is what my daughter found as, um, you know, as a light. Mm -hmm. And I want, she wanted to share that with you as well. And so they're so cute when they walk in there. And parents are just so thankful, and the kids are very thankful as well. And that has, um, again, been another piece of our therapy and to see McKenna, to see her work in action. And there are all sorts of different forms of therapy. You and I were talking about this briefly, 
um, before we started recording is, you know, sometimes there's different points when therapy is needed and other times where you're not quite ready for it. Right. But through actions like this, this also becomes another form of therapy, not traditional, maybe sitting with a therapist. Right. But um, doing something with that energy that's proactive. Right. And, I mean, you're literally impacting hundreds, if not thousands of children and their parents. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you had something that you could say to a parent that has just received a diagnosis that you know, their child has you know, cancer or another uh, life-threatening mm -hmm. um, condition that they're facing, what advice would you give to one of those parents? Not that there's a, you know, one mm. thing that fits all. No, you're right. But what's something that you would share with them? Um, I guess what has, you know, helped us the most in healing, whether it was during the time of our hospital stays or the passing of her, um, has been, has been to share, um, I don't even, it's hard to explain, um, helping others. And that's something that was hard for me to do at the beginning was to, help others. Um, but so many people were helping us and I know firsthand how wonderful that felt. Yeah. Um, so when you say it was, it was hard, was it because of the depression that you're saying that made it hard to do? Well, depression or is there too busy, or too busy. Um, no, I wouldn't say I was busy. My brain didn't work. Right. Um, you did not have a normal, uh, thought. I didn't know what day of the week it was. I mean, I couldn't think for quite a long, long time. Right. Um, and I think this is important for other parents to know that that is normal. Yeah. Not even just parents, just when you have a loved one that you can have some of these lapses of time yeah. or brain fog. Completely. Is what I call it. Completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did feel like I was in a fog for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Um, but people helping us, not asking what did I need. I'm going to say that was huge. Don't mm -hmm. ask me what I needed because I couldn't tell you. Um, That's actually really powerful what you just said. Yeah. Because a lot of people say that you just let us know what you need. You don't know. I you had no know idea. Articulate. Could not articulate it yeah. whatsoever. Um, yeah, that's a power one right there. People um, brought food. Um, they cleaned my house. Um, brought food. <laughs> cleaned my house. Um, doing things that I just, I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, um, I couldn't always even be home. I was in the hospital for days. Laundry was a big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, we did, uh, after about a month, we, um, were trying to do things in our house to take as much germs out of our house. We got new carpet. Mm -hmm. Um, so people came over, moved all of our furniture. They carpeted our entire house in one day. And they put everything back. We wow. walked in our house and it was done. Incredible. Um, they came and painted some of our house. And those were things she had, you had to worry about because she was undergoing, was it because of the chemo? Correct. So she okay. had very low blood counts. She wouldn't be able to invite an infection mm -hmm. or any wow. little germ. And I just wanted to have it to be as clean as possible. So like I said, the cleaning of our house was important. Mm -hmm. um, people came and painted some of my house. Um whatever needed to be done, a stool needed to be fixed, you know, those things you just never get around to doing. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of people that came in and just did things, mowed my lawn. That was another big thing. Um, we did our gardens, um, and this, planted this flowers. Is is when you have a loved one that gets sick, um, yeah, normal life is busy, mm -hmm. just for like the normal mom right. and dad that have kids that are playing soccer and cheerleading. Correct. It's yeah. very, very busy. Yes. But when you get to the point that you have a loved one that has a long-term health condition, um, it does take you out of the house a lot, mm -hmm. and it does feed up a lot of time between doctor's appointments and hospitals that those basic things become, um, number one, lack of time, and then probably getting home. You're lucky to take a shower and go to sleep. If you're lucky. Yeah. If you're lucky. Yeah. 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 So it's uh, it's a beautiful thing, though, to know that you had friends and family. Yes. That tried to help. Very much um, so. And step up. Yeah. 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 That was huge. Mm-hmm.
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just you know, so support. Was like sweet. now, um, where where are you at now? Like, how's you're you're coming up to one year, and it's the difficult milestone. Um, in so this here. in this one year, we have um, we have opened up her beauty bar. Mm-hmm. Um, we have become a nonprofit organization now. It's wonderful. Um, we've opened up a, another entity of the beauty bar, which is um, Beauty Bar Boxes. And on her actual one year anniversary, we are doing something called Make a Difference Day. Tell me about that. Make a Difference Make Day. Make a Difference Day, the McKenna Squad way. Oh, I love it. It even rhymes. Yes. So um, we have. He wonders where she is sometimes, I think. Puppy just came over here and he gave us a great big long <laughs> stare and then walked away. <laughs> um, it was cute. Yes. Um, so we are doing Make a Difference Day on that day. And um, again, my therapy has come from Kenna's spirit, meaning she wanted to make a difference always. And then she t- made this huge difference. And so now... We are going to keep doing that in celebration and in memory of her beautiful soul. And so what this is, um, we have talked about it on our, um, on our social media. And um, you can do it any way you want. Do anything small, anything big to make a difference on that day. One of the things that um, some of our schools are going to be doing around here is um, we are going to, at my school, I'm an um, elementary school teacher, and um, our school is going to do um, service projects. So K through 5, every grade level is going to be doing a different service project. And we are going to then take our service projects and implement their projects into the Beauty Bar boxes. And so all of their projects are going to go into the boxes um, for kids who are going to be in hospitals. So that's teaching how other kids correct. to do their part now too. Correct, and you know this. So her legacy's gone way beyond a beauty bar. Correct. Now she's inspiring a generation. Exactly. What a life! And we are um, planning on you know purchasing more beauty bar boxes, and we're going to go places. So what's in the beauty bar box? Like what Great. are the goodies that are in there? Great question. So if you look at the beauty bar box. It um, looks just like the beauty bar. So we wanted it to be the same experience as Mm -hmm. if you were walking into the beauty bar. Mm -hmm. So it has her logo on it. It has her quote around it. Um, It has a letter from her on the back of it. Oh, that's beautiful. And you open it up and there is her wall, her chandelier with the mirrors and... um, the um the two stools you know the two vanities yeah and yeah. um then on the top is a um a letter from us is joining thank you for joining McKenna's beauty or the McKenna squad right and this is just explains a little bit more about who we are and what we're planning to do under that is a book it's Benson's um, adventure and this book was written by um, two local teachers one was a principal one's a teacher at a local school district. Mm-hmm. And they um, dedicated this book to McKenna. Um, McKenna and Hannah are actually in the book with Coach Tom Izzo from the Michigan State um, basketball. And so they were talking about um, what it's like to be a hero um, and how they are making a difference. Mm -hmm. So this journey is about people's journeys in Michigan Mm -hmm. and their adventures and how it has impacted them. Mm -hmm. So this book is part of our box. Then you open it up, pass the book, and there is an insert with her initial M and her signature is on it. Then you pull out your insert, and it is filled with different pieces of makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, there might be some compact mirrors in there. Um, there could be um, there's eyeshadow palettes, there's mascara, there's liners, there's lipstick, there's lip balm. Um, there could be some cologne, some perfume. There could be some fake eyelashes. Um, there could be blush, highlighter, you name it, those kind, lotions, fake nails, 
Um, we have lots of things that have been donated to us mm -hmm. to incorporate into our beauty bar boxes. I love that. Yeah. We have boy boxes as well. That's wonderful. I was yes. going to ask you about yes, that. Yes, we do. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are making pillowcases as one of our um, projects. And we have people who have made pillowcases and donated them to, to us. Mm -hmm. So we have boy pillowcases and girl ones. So those have gone into the boxes as well. Um, colognes, perfumes. We have socks in some of them. Mm -hmm. So we have boy socks, girl socks. Um, so we are just... And they've started taking these socks to a whole new level lately with some of the little design decor oh, yes. things. Oh, yes. It's not like they're not standard just white, white tubes. No, no, no more. they're uh -uh. very cute. So that's yeah, how we that. have filled up our beauty bar boxes. I love that. Now, before we started, you were telling me a little bit about when you guys first launched um, at one of the children's hospitals, um, and you were sharing that story. Do you want to share that with some of our listeners? Sure. So the day that we um, opened up was um, in June of 2018. And like I said, um, we got to have a special um, viewing of it. Mm -hmm. um, we all got to go up there and just... A viewing of the beauty boxes. The beauty bar. Bar. Okay. The yes. bar itself. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. the beauty bar is in Detroit. Okay. Um, and is that at uh, Children's Hospital? Correct. Okay. Children's Hospital of Michigan in Detroit there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, when we walked in there, um, we just, you know, we're looking all around and just seeing all the cute little pieces that they um, they brought to the table as well, the people at the hospital. Um, they all knew McKenna. They all knew what her passion was. And the nur n the nurses all the were... the nurses would want to know. Yes. The, I saw the photos yes. of her eyelashes and eyebrows. She yes. She like a job. Yes. <laughs> she, the girl... She knew what she was like doing. She looked like a J-Lo makeup pro. <laughs> yes. Seriously. She, she was very good at it. Um, she even did some of the nurses' um, makeup in the hospital. Oh, I love that. She did a very nice job with them, too. And they were in awe. Like, wow, Kenna, you say it, but... It, they didn't get it until she actually did it, you know, on them. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we're in there for our, our, you know, our time. We were got to be in there for a couple of hours because we took a few people in, took a few people out, and we brought other people in, our friends and stuff. Yeah. And in comes, in comes this little girl, and she's got her IV pole, and she's got her, you know, her nightgown on from her hospital gear. And um, she walks in here, and she comes right over to me, and she said, are you McKenna's mom? And I was just like, well, yes, I am. And wow. who are you? Or I felt like she was just this little angel girl that was sent to us from Kenna right. to say, look, mom, I'm so proud. Um, yeah. It's exactly what I wanted. And I would have loved to have, you know, to been able to go to a room like this in the hospital and spend some time there. Right. right. And so this little girl spent the afternoon um, there with us. Um, she um, she asked if the girls could put the makeup on her. So McKenna's um, sister Hannah started in. Mom, can I grab? I said, you guys grab whatever you want. That's so Take cool. Take out what she wants you yeah. to put. You know what color she wants, right. and that's what we did. I love um, we had a beautiful afternoon time with her. And the girls got to play with makeup. Mm -hmm. um, they had a great time. Just that one little girl sounds like it made the whole afternoon it mi worthwhile. Oh, completely. Yeah. She joined us because um, we had two places. We had the beauty bar itself where mm -hmm. only like 10 of us could go at a time. And then we had the rest of us, the other 30 of us downstairs in another location. Mm -hmm. And in that location, we had food and we had cake and we had drinks and we had our... Um, um, our uh, Pete and I call it a Pete and repeat. What do you call it though? It's oh, a yeah, step and repeat. Thank you. Yeah. Step and repeat down there. And we had our karaoke machine down there. Oh my and gosh. And the little girl that came is down like a there. Fashion walk. It was. <laughs> we had it. music. The girls were dancing. I oh. mean, she was right with every girl. See, that's it's bringing life it was. to the youth that it, need it most. I yep. love it. Yep. And I think, you know, that they felt um her her light that day because she said I feel absolutely beautiful. It's what the little girl yeah. said. And it's probably what McKenna wanted to exactly. share. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I showed her, you know, all around the beauty bar, and I said, this is what she wanted. She wanted you to have, you know, your beauty, but she wanted you to get some courage to, to go and do other things and to find your strength and, and in, this, in this time. And... She I had gotta a ball. tell you, I, I'm almost curious, like with little girls like that that you're talking about, mm -hmm. is 
there's inspiration from the beauty bar and the beauty boxes. But I almost wonder when these other little kids, boys and girls and parents, hear her story and how during her struggle she ended up creating something else. I can't help but to wonder if she's going to be inspiring other people to create other programs that are far and beyond. They have, you know, it could be like Tonka toys or whatever. Right, right. But it's amazing, this one little human soul yeah. created all of these good yeah. vibrations in, right. I mean, just a little bit more than a decade. Some of us can't do that in exactly. years. Exactly. And, th and to think that she shared that, and you know, that little girl's going to remember that. I know. And, and I think it was so cool. She knew that you were her mom. She did. I, I don't know if, I don't know how it happened. I don't know if somebody pointed me out. I don't know. She I just walked know. in, came right up to me and yeah. I hugged her and I cried and it's so beautiful. It was, it was such a moment for me. And I just was, I kept looking at her going, yeah, yeah. you know, I think you can. And the cool thing is, is like going back, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I think people that are still there feel like maybe they're stuck there and then other families fade away. And then you came back even after getting through, through that, you came back to help more. And, and that takes some real strength. Yeah. That's the first time we were back since we left. Yeah. Um, so it that takes was some courage. hard. I bet. Yeah. And it was weird because the hospital looked different. Yeah. It looked so different. Um, I mean, they were already doing some rebuilding stuff there, and they were already renovating places. But I wonder if it was more of like an energy difference it was, because she wasn't there. Or um, was it No, aesthetic? it was both. It was both. Okay. It was both um, physically and, and mentally. It was just sure. so different. But everything in life now looks different um, than it did before. Yeah. And um, so the hospital asked us to, um, because that's the big thing down in Detroit is the beauty bar. Mm -hmm. When everybody comes, they want to see it. And mm -hmm. so that's uh, like the new place to hang out for the kids. So that's a big, a big point that they want to make sure that everybody sees that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they did a grand opening of the entryway just a mm -hmm. couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they wanted us to do was to design the, um, a showcase and they said, do it any way you guys want. So we made it into a mini beauty bar. And so we have a cute desk and a chair and all the makeup. And we had the logo and the chandelier look and everything Yeah. Um, yeah. down in the main foyer area. So c people could just see, oh, this is what they're talking about. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Pull it out into the open so yep. that people can see it. Yeah. 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 So with moving forward... Um, what are things that, you know, listeners and other people in the community can do to support your effort and your vision? Because I imagine it, it obviously takes money yes. to be able to put these yes. projects together for these kids yes. and time. So how can people help you with what you're doing? Well, that's a great question. And we appreciate all the support because it comes from so many people and I just want to thank everybody that has has um, read our story or heard our story and has been inspired by our story. And so now they are on to us. They want to, be, like, I want to become of your squad. Your squad does such amazing things for other people. Like, why do you not want to be a part of this is how they, you know, right? we want right. to be a part of it. Um, so they help out in different ways. But one of the ways is, yes, financially to... Um, to purchase um, our boxes cost us money. Um, Landell did donate our first 500 boxes to us. Which is um, incredible. They're very an amazing family. I would agree. I would yeah. very much agree. And they have touched my heart so much. And seeing the design, you know, in my brain and seeing the design come to fruition took me about two hours, three hours to open one up, to look at it, wow. and to cry over it. I bet. Yeah. I bet. So that was, you know, just a day yeah. I had, I didn't envision yeah. to, yeah, to happen. But, um, well, there was a lot of things that were coming all together at once. Oh yes. In that one little box. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. box was a, a big thing for us. Pictures worth a thousand words. Yes. Maybe a box is worth a million. Yes. So, yeah. um, us incorporating the book, you know, and all of our boxes costs us money. Right. And then, um, we have, um, other pieces, we have ribbon. So we have our beauty bar ribbon. That's our handle. And then we have the pink 
Um, the pink as our flooring kind of of the beauty bar. So that's where all details, the makeup, details, little details. Little details, yes. So all <laughs> of this like together. She yes, she Chandeliers knew. Chandeliers and sparkle walls. She knew. <laughs> um, she knew what she wanted it to look like. And so we're taking her design and making it Love into it. a box. So that has taken us some financial um So how are ways well. that people that... Uh, can help and support and donate or volunteer. So or, like, we have a, help you? so we do have a nonprofit, um, account, um, and they can donate to that from our website. What's your website? Our website is, is sorry, is www.mckennasquadbeautybar.weebly.com. All one word. Spell that last part out. Cause you said we, what? Weebly. It's W E E B L Y. Um, and people get McKenna's, I mean, you Google it and you'll see lots of different articles, lots of different social media. Um, I don't think you could not find it. I would think that, but, um, if you Google McKenna squad beauty bar, you should be able to find it. M-C-K-E-N-N-A-S-S-Q-U-A-D because it's McKenna's and then squad, all one word. If we keep this up, we can break out into the YMCA <laughs> too. <laughs> and then beauty bar, it's all one word. Um, I love it. Yeah, I so that it. is our website. And it's how much per box? Like if somebody says they want to donate. Question. Yep. You know. So we charge $35 per box. Mm -hmm. um, the hospitals are planning to put those boxes in their gift shops to sell to help um, support the boxes as well. And um, we've donated some of our boxes to the hospitals. We've kept some of them to sell them to keep that um, monetary continuously to come in so we can buy right. some more for the hospitals. Right, right. So you said hospitals with an S. Yes. Tell me which hospitals that you've reached out to already. So currently we are at Hurley's, um, Hurley's Hospital here in Flint, Michigan. Um, we are going to, of course, Children's down in Detroit. They want to put some in their hospital in Detroit. They want to put some in their Troy's facility down there. Mm -hmm. um, and we are trying to partner up with other hospitals in Michigan, Tennessee, Florida, I love Ohio. It. I love it. Um, so we need to get our um, monetary items in place as well as all of our makeup items in place so that we can take our boxes because that's our plan is to take them all over. Mm -hmm. um, and our boxes are easier to transport than building inside of hospitals. So finding room inside of a children's hospital is very difficult. Um, Detroit just happened to be the one that wanted to make that happen. That's great. And so they that's exactly what they did. They made it happen. Um, but again, building inside of hospitals, we mm -hmm. would love to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but finding that place is difficult. So we have the, now the second option to bring the boxes in, um, as they can still experience the beauty bar. That is wonderful. Yes. That is just so wonderful. And you know, the beauty bar boxes weren't even on our list at first. Yeah. Um, somebody came to us from Hurley cause we came to them and said, we'd like to build and they said, we would love for you to build, but we have a better idea that might get you more. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute. What do you know, dude? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And he said, what about a beauty bar box? And right, I was like, right. well, that's a nifty idea. Let me, let me think about it. And we were on board, you know, right after that. So that's incredible. And, you know, and I think it's one of the magical things about human experience is through all of us in our collective moments that we've gone through some of them bitter and mm -hmm. some of them beautiful yeah. some a little bit of both uh, but taking that wisdom and then working together to create a better opportunity or a more comfortable scenario for the next person that goes through yeah. that journey you know and I mean these things don't take away the pain but it no. provides comfort true to the patient and parent true and to even people like yourself you know, of being able to continue to share that love. So, you know, a big sweet kudos to you for having the courage. Because it, especially, I think, during that first year after going through a loss, it yeah. becomes very difficult to sometimes even want to get out of the bed. Yes, it does. And to continue to move on. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like through giving back to others, it gave you strength to keep going on. For sure. 
I think sharing her legacy has inspired me to to keep going mm-hmm. and to keep trying to heal. I mean, it's a process. This journey has been a huge process, and I didn't know the answers, you know, five days ago of what I was going to be doing, you know, today. But right. every day something happens, yeah. and you just keep praying. And, and you have still, you know, another daughter, so it creates a thing where you've got to continue to Definitely. find life yeah. and sources of story where it's not just focused on death, um, which is very hard. Uh, it's an understatement if there ever was one, but it's that cross of being split between both. Mm-hmm. And uh, she had a great it's a warrior. Yeah, she has been a warrior. Um, every time that I do cry, Hannah's words of wisdom always to me are, "Mom, just keep thinking of our good times with her." It's beautiful. And she says that every time I go, yeah. "Honey, I am. I really am. I, I mean, I do have a side where I do think of, you know." The difficulties she did would go through, and that's you know just part of my uh, being a mom, of trauma. right? Yes, yeah. yes. But one of the things that um, she um, wanted to do for the beauty bar boxes now, in honor of her uh, sister, was she wanted to um, hand out the very first box. Hannah did. Hannah did. So instead of doing a ribbon cutting ceremony, um, our ceremony was handing out the very first box. And the very first... You're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, she did it. Yes. Oh and she announced it. Um, she did it yeah. in front of everybody. Wow. And um, she announced it um, on TV, too, meaning um, the beauty bar box went to a little a girl that was very special to our family. Right. She, um, same age as McKenna. Mm-hmm. She was in the exact same class as McKenna. She was diagnosed with cancer a, about a, exactly a year after McKenna, mm-hmm. and um, she went through Hurley. Um, she is cancer free right now, and doing very well. She's back at school full time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, because she um, was one who had a picture of her wearing her McKenna Squad shirt uh-huh. and supporting Kenna. Um, and now we wanted to support her. That is so cool. And so we invited her, her family, um, up to our event. Mm-hmm. And um, Ken, or Hannah's, uh, she packed the box even. And I said, I don't care what you put in it. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to tell you right now, Should Lauren. Duct tape to close it. Well, I said, um, <laughs> not every beauty box is going to be as full as this one. <laughs> <laughs> You're extra special. Yeah. We really like you. So, um, so Lauren, um, Team Lauren, um, she had Wilms tumor was her, um, her, uh, her cancer. And like I said, she is beautiful. Absolutely we, gorgeous. We actually had a little bit of a crazy time in Grand Blank um, a year and a half ago with multiple kids um, in Grand Blank schools, which if you're not from the area, Grand Blank's a relatively small town. Uh, but there were, um, I think, three or four kids just in Grand Blank that had uh, cancer. I know a little boy that had wrist cancer and... Um, and I was familiar with your story just because we live in a small little big town, um, where it's, you know, a suburb outside of Flint where, you know, a key part of Flint. Um, but if there's 60 degrees of separation in Genesee County, it's probably more like two degrees of separation. Wouldn't you agree? I would. Maybe three. It's been amazing. (laughs) Oh, it's been amazing how so and so knows so and so and heard of the story, those kind of things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. better keep a good reputation with that beauty. Definitely. No, no uh, what was that Wet and Wild? Remember that cheap makeup yep. from the eighties? It was nope. Awful. She she threw that all out. <laughs> well, you took her to Sephora. I know. So you created I a uh, very expensive. I diva. did. Yeah, I love it. But hey, you know the good things sometimes cost a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. So um. In this upcoming um, issue of Kudos Magazine, we're going to be highlighting your story and a little bit about the beauty bar and stuff. And we'll include some information, too, on how if somebody wants to sponsor um, a beauty bar box um, of how they can get tuned in. And one of the things that we're going to do today is we're going to make a $200 donation 
um, to help you get some more boxes for the kids. And um, I just, I can't tell you how grateful I am for people like you that are finding the strength after going through a difficult time to stand back up and um, fight back for the other ones that are still there. And I think until you've gone down roads like this, you can't quite comprehend it. Um, But sometimes after you survive, you just want to, you know, go to sleep and get through it. Uh, But taking that strength and becoming a warrior, um, like your daughter and your husband and yourself and the community and saying, no, we're going to take this a little bit more um, in a direction to help more people is it's how we make change and how we continue to give comfort. And I just, um, I totally respect what you're doing, and I'm grateful that I had a chance to meet you, and uh, and and your little dog too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's kind of hanging out. Even the dog's fashionable, you guys. I got to tell you, he doesn't just have on like dog fur. He has on a perfectly matching. It's like a uh, sweater cloak that has um, plaid. Yeah, that's trendy plaid. <laughs> Say McKenna. That's McKenna. Um, yeah. Super cute. McKenna named, um, picked him out. What's his name? His name is Jackson. Jackson. But the special part of Jackson is, um, look at him. (laughs) What? (laughs) His middle name is Cray. And um, people are like, well, you know, where'd you get that name? I said, Kenna. Kenna gave people nicknames. Mm -hmm. And you were very special to her. She has a nickname for lots of people. And um, Jackson's was Cray. And she took um, her her middle name Ray, and she took Hannah's middle name of Cruz, and she put them together <laughs> to get Cray. What a bright mind! I'm telling you, yeah. I think she would have worked in marketing or become yes. a key executive. Yes, she just had it. She did. I was like, natural. yeah. Well, we look forward to uh, hearing more from your family in the future too, and um, to see Hannah continue on yes. having a bright happy life and yes. getting into you know some more peace in life and um, I'm just so grateful that you allowed us to share your story I really well, appreciate you. you it's a very yeah. personal special it's very special to me of course it's my daughter but it's very special I feel like to share with others just going through something traumatic but also going through you know, the aftermath of it and seeing what she wanted us to do. Like she had it all set up and said, here you go. That's beautiful. And thank you for sharing that. Thank you. All right. In the meantime, we wish you a beautiful day filled with peace, love, and happiness. And if you want to follow more stories like this, you can check us out online at cupofkudos.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.